bless you. Welcome to the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We hope that you enjoy this message, that it touches your spirit, begins a radical transformation and a life change in your life. We're getting ready to go to a powerful message from Bishop David Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 3 as hopefully we wrap up this portion of the unlimited you. Uh, we are teaching you about the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, depending on your background, what your preferences are. You need to understand the Holy Spirit, not just have an idea about him, because 90% of the New Testament, 80% of the New Testament is God working through the Spirit of God to the people of God. So there has to be an understanding of the Holy Spirit so that you and I can have a cooperative relationship with the Spirit of God. So we're not adversarial or resisting the work of the Holy Ghost. Hey, y'all. Resisting the work of the Holy Spirit. So we, we are taking our time as we walk through understanding, learning about the Holy Ghost um, so that you have a closer relationship with God and so the power of God actually begins to work more efficiently in your life. I like to call it getting in the flow of God's Spirit. Now that has nothing to do with whether you get chills. You could have a fever. So, 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 chills can't be the main indicator that the Holy Spirit is moving. Because we often have the air conditioner booming in here, and you, you be like, I might be, you know, was that the Spirit? No, you're just, you're just cold. You know, I'm praying and. You forgot, to, you, you forgot your phone was on vibrate and it started vibrating and you, that, that's your phone, that ain't the Lord. Amen. Amen. Being saved doesn't make you weird. That's right. Not supposed to make you weird. No. If anything, it's supposed to settle you in. Yeah. Being saved doesn't make you mean. No. You know mean Christians, they need deliverance. Yeah. They're saved but they need deliverance. Because Jesus doesn't make you mean. Well, that's just my personality. Not anymore. Okay. Daniel. Chapter 3. Let me know when you get there. Thank you all. I'm so dry today, if you lit a match to me, I'll probably catch on fire. <laughs> Drinking all this water. Y'all that's my age know that can be precarious. <laughs> a amen. Daniel chapter 3. Once again, you should be familiar with this by now. Beginning at verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats. They took their coats, tied them up with them, their holes in their socks, their turbans, their hats, tied them up with that. Other garments took their underwear, undergarments, tied them up with that, cast them in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandments were urgent, was urgent, urgent the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they went into a fire that killed the people trying to put them in the fire. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound, fell down bound in the midst, right in the middle of the fire. So for illustration point, we can say that was the hottest part. The Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, or Old Testament, astonied, 
and rose up in haste and spake and said to his counselors, did we not cast three men down into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men, <laughs> loose, walking in the hottest part of the fire. And they have no hurt. And that fourth one, because we put three in there, we thought. But the fourth one, the one that was in there before the three walked in, Nebuchadnezzar said, it looked like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake, said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Now, this is, this is what blows my mind. It does not say they came out of the furnace. Yes. They just stepped out of the hottest part. Yes. <laughs> so they're going to testify while they're still in the fire. Right, 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 right. Yes. They're going to praise God while stuff looks... Yes. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yes. They're in it, but it doesn't stop their worship. Because yes. they know who's in it with them. Yes. Am I talking to the right crowd? Man, this Bible's amazing. 27, and the princes, governors, and the captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. So the fire was designed to destroy them. But witnesses saw that the fire had no power over them. They did see the soldiers die because the fire had power over them. But these are God's people. He, then he starts getting detailed. Nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire passed on them. Good God Almighty. It's time to get free. One of the misconceptions about the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whichever term you are comfortable with, um, is that our faith ought not to have anything to do with our feelings. Now, this makes no sense at all because God created us with feelings, but he never created us to be dominated by how we feel. All of us have been in situations where our emotions got our mind drunk. Am I talking to the right crowd? Because your emotions can get your mind intoxicated. When one of the purposes of God giving us this mind, especially the transformed mind in salvation, is so when your emotions are attempting to get your mind drunk, your mind sobers your emotions. So there can't be anything wrong with emotions because God created us to have them. At the same time, we cannot allow our emotions to lead us in life. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there is very little spoken about the Holy Ghost where your senses are not involved. Okay, that's the, I was looking for that blank, yeah. So when John, in the book of John, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, was it Nicodemus? Yeah, he was talking to Nicodemus, and the context of the wind is the focus of that particular story. 
He says, you can hear it. And we all know we can see the effects of wind, but you can't see wind. Am I making sense? But you can feel when the wind is blowing. So in the context of your faith, your senses are important. Here it comes, because God's word describes the Holy Ghost as wind. Describes the Holy Ghost as sound. Something you can hear, something you can see. Describes the Holy Ghost as being recognized by your senses. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? How else would we experience an interaction with the Holy Ghost if you couldn't feel wind when it's blowing? If you can hear the sound of it when it's blowing? Am I making sense to you? This, Christians have a tendency to make things more complex than they are, which is why God breaks things down in simplistic ways. So yes, our senses, our feelings can get in our way at times. But God gave us like this. Your mind was never given to you to be in charge of you. Amen. Your brain is supposed to be your servant. You tell it what to do. Am I making sense to you? So, so in the context of who we are in Christ, he comes along, Bev, and then he gives us the Holy Spirit and says, I'm going to transform your mind because your mind's been out of order almost as long as you've been alive. Been telling you what to do when you have the right to say objection. Now, I don't need you to make a list, but I know historically you can think of a few situations yeah. Yeah. where your mind told you what to do, some time passed, and then you went and did it. Yeah. That time that passed was opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after, after opportunity to tell your mind, no, we're not doing that. Amen. Amen. So, the Holy Ghost is known and experienced partially, not entirely, through our senses. All right, let's take a look at something. Go to John chapter 3. I need you to be familiar with this. John chapter 3. Those of you that are guests of ours, we are Holy Ghost Church. In case we don't usually say Holy Spirit, we are Holy Ghost Church. <laughs> we, we love to move with the Holy Ghost. So we're Pentecostal in our flavor. Amen. Amen. Remember the truth. You don't like folks saying stuff. You, mm. God's been too good to us, us to stay quiet about him when we come together. Amen. Amen. John chapter 3. Let me know when you get there. Go down to verse 5. Jesus is having this conversation with Nicodemus. Are you, are you at verse 5? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except an individual, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, born of water, baptism of repentance, baptism of repentance, and of the Spirit, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You see it? All right. Watch this now. Man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So I've got to have the baptism of water, and I've got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost to just enter the kingdom. Do you see it? All right, watch how it works. Now, don't look at me. Look at your Bible. 
That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Makes perfect sense. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you got your natural life from your natural parents. You get a spiritual life from your spiritual father. God. You see it? All right, watch this. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Now here's the understanding. That born again in original language is born from above. So you're born once on earth, but born from above, which gives you a second birth. That's why it says born again. Are you following me? Watch how this works now. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. The wind blows where it lists. It blows where it wants to. Amen. You do not go outside and have say over which way the wind blows. It blows where it Can't find a seat. It's up here. Let me sit there. You're good. They still had a seat right there. Y'all wasn't letting him in? Huh? You want your seat back, man? You want to sit back up here? Come on. Come on. Come on. I pay his attention. Amen. <laughs> Y'all pray for your pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Somebody say the wind blows where it wants to. Watch this. It says, and thou hearest the sound thereof. So it blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound of it. All right, now watch the context. So Nicodemus is a a Pharisee, and he's come to meet Jesus, but he came at nighttime because he didn't want his boys to know he was coming and had this meeting with Jesus. All right? So he comes at night, and they're in the house. Now, they've gone up on the roof of the house. Now, in those days, the roofs had walls. So now they're standing up on the roof with the walls on all sides. And the wind's blowing. So immediately Jesus says, watch this now, wind blows where it wants to. You can hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it came from. Y'all follow me? Then he says something amazing. He's teaching about the Holy Ghost, and he calls it wind. So you can hear it. Everybody knows you can feel wind. Amen? Amen? All right. So it says, but you can't tell where it comes from. Or where it's going. Amen. It hits your house, you don't know where it's going. <laughs> Good God Almighty, this understanding is wonderful, ain't it? Like, watch, it <laughs> watch this thing. He said, watch this now. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Watch this. So something tells you it happened. And it ain't just what the Bible says. You felt something. Said everybody that gets saved has this same experience. I can't tell you which direction the Holy Ghost came from, but I tell you it came and it produced a sound out of me. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you feel the wind, you hear the wind. Everyone is born of the Spirit, has experienced the force of the wind. The Bible calls the Holy Ghost the breath of God. And lets us know that the Holy Ghost has the instincts of a dove. So in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, the illustration is that dove-like illustration. The the bird wants to land, but can't land before God speaks a word. Do I need to show you all that? 
I'll just tell you. Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, the earth without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved, hovered over the face of the water. Kept hovering until God said, let there be. So when you got saved, Holy Ghost was waiting. Yes. Hallelujah. And then you said, Lord, save me. Yes. Boom. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Do you get it? Yes. Hovered over you, Hallelujah. waiting for you to say the right words yes. because he'd already been given permission to land. So when you think of the Holy Ghost, I need you to think of power. Yeah. A good word for my life is energy, yeah. strength, yeah. comfort. Yeah. And then the Bible also calls the Holy Ghost that has the, it's a fragrant oil. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's a scent that lasts. Yeah. Call, calls it, uh, that's what the spirit of worship is. That's, that's, that's how God told the difference between Noah's worship, the smell of that, versus the smell of all the dead things around it. The Bible calls it a sweet savor in the nostrils of God. So it doesn't matter how stinky everything is around you. When you start worshiping God, something sweet But you can't do that unless you have the Holy Ghost yeah. and worship God in spirit uh -huh. and in truth. It's making sense. Yes, Watch how this works now. Stay with me. So now we talk about wind. When you think wind, you got to think movement. Yeah. Think wind, you think movement. Old Testament calls it ruha. The breath of God, the wind of God, the spirit of God. New Testament calls it pneuma, the wind blows. A feeling that can be understood. An invisible force, invisible power that is felt. The source is not seen, but the source is felt. I told you before, the Holy Spirit's presence is constant from Old Testament to New Testament. I told you the baptism of the Holy Spirit is essential first for you to become a part of the body of Christ, then gifting. The baptism grafts you in, but also empowers you with the specific tools God has given you. I'd rather you live Christ-like and be sweet and strong at the same time. Yeah. Then call yourself anointed and be mean as hell. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. That was worse. Mean is not the Holy Ghost. Mean is not the Holy Ghost. Mean is not the Holy Ghost. I hear you, but you don't know what's happened to me in my life. God knows one of the reasons he gave you the Holy Ghost, so you get delivered from those feelings. God's not going to erase the past. Here it is. You have been through fire, but you will no longer see flames and have a flashback. You, you don't have to carry the impact the rest of your life. Let the Spirit of God burn that mess up. Let him incinerate that thing. It's making sense to you. Yeah. 
Here we go. Here we go. So, hmm. Go to Luke chapter 3. I remember Daniel. They're in the fiery furnace, right? All three of them saved. Jesus in there with them. So the fire that destroyed other things did not consume them. It just consumed what had them tied. Most of y'all miss it. Not a hair on their head was burned. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> But the stuff that folk tied them up with, yeah. they got loose from. Come on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now? Watch how this works. Watch how this works. Luke, 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 chapter 3. Are you there? All right, look at verse 16. John answered, I hear a lot of pages. Luke, chapter 3. Everybody there? All right, because I don't want anybody to miss this. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. That's the baptism of repentance. You see it? Yes. He said, but one mightier than I comes, means he's coming after, the latch or the shoelaces on his sandals, on his shoes, on his red bottom." The shoelaces on his shoes, I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with what? Going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with? So the Hebrew boys were in the fire. And it was supposed to kill them. But the Lord was baptizing them with the fire. You need to hear what I'm telling you. There's some stuff you've been through that was supposed to destroy you, but it just baptized you for the next thing that you... Ain't nobody talking to me. Ain't nobody talking to me. That hard time at work, it was a baptism. That hard time in life, it was a baptism. The projects is a baptism. Tell us words. Tell us words. Woo! Watch this now. <laughs> Let me show you why the, why the, why the, uh, why the fire wasn't hot enough to burn them in Daniel. <laughs> 17, whose fan is in his hand. Usually you wave at a fire, it gets hotter. Come on, Bishop. come on, come on. Jesus said, I got a different kind of fan in my hand. Yes, sir. I'm going to cool you down while all your enemies watch you stand in the midst of what they thought was going to destroy you. I'm going to keep you. God Almighty, huh? yes. Come on here, church. Thank you. You've been in a fire. Yes. It did not destroy you. Yes. Jesus was standing there. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Bible says Jesus is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and tell your neighbor time to get loose. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1.
Some of y'all sitting there, I was wondering when you're going to get to this. If you don't understand the other stuff, ain't no need of teaching you this. <laughs> What's this now? Acts chapter 1, are you there? For time's sake, let's go down to verse 5. You have it? Watch the confirmation for John truly baptized with water. Jesus speaking in the book of Acts. But he shall be baptized. But you shall be baptized. You shall be baptized. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days in the future. Watch this now. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? He said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father hath put in his own power. Now why would you say Because he doesn't want you having a date and figuring you can just mess up till the date comes. So he said, I need you not to know. I need you to act like I'm coming five minutes from now. But plan like you got time. Now let's work. Look at this thing now. Here it comes, verse 8. But you shall receive what? When? After the Holy Ghost is what? Now watch this. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Your life shall be a witness unto me. All over the place. Unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Go to chapter 2. Are you still with me? All right. And when, this is what he's talking about not many days hence, talking about the day of Pentecost. All right. And when the day of Pentecost was, what's your Bible say? All right. So that means that on a personal level, from Genesis to now, it had not fully come. My. Well, what's it like when you get the fullness of the Holy Ghost? That's how this works now. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. So, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One place in agreement. And suddenly, so we need to be in the same place and be in agreement for something sudden is that in your Bible or not? One place, one accord. Jesus already told them, won't be long that something greater is coming. Do you see it? You got to get this. Watch how this works now. Oh, Lord. And suddenly, is that in your Bible? Yes. There came a what? Yeah. All right. I told you your senses work in communion with the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Suddenly there came a sound like as of. That's the like as principle. Like, like we say, this was like that. Yes. So the sound was like not a breeze, but a mighty rushing wind. Do, do you see that? And it, somebody say the sound, filled the place where they were sitting. They were sitting, and the sound came from heaven, and it was absolutely distinct because it wasn't a breeze. It's like a hurricane came to the house. 
like a mighty rushing wind, a wind that moves stuff, a wind you can feel, a wind that's undeniable, a wind you can hear, but you can't tell where it came from. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this, y'all. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Is that like as there? Like fire. Sound like wind. Cloven tongues like. How many of y'all got gas stove in your house? Got gas stove? So how, y'all re- how many of y'all remember what it was like to have a gas stove? You know, everybody got the electric thing going now. You know, you, now you can't even see the burners. They got their fancy glass over top. But I'm talking about back in the day when you didn't, when you had one pair of shoes. And, And you turn that burner on, and poof, those flickering points were cloven tongues. So, Violet hears the sound of the wind, and then the fire shows up over her head. She's not being burned. Because this is power lingering over her. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Fire this close, but not a hair on her head. Y'all missing this thing. Y'all missing. She don't have any degree burn. Yes. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. It sat on how many of them? Says each. 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 He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and each of them got the Holy Ghost. You can't be saved without it. Here we go. We're almost done. I got to get the rest of this thought in your head. Watch this next verse, verse 4. And they were all what? With the what? And they were all filled with who? How many of them? So the fire presented itself. And the response was they were all filled with who? The Holy Ghost. So God saves you and gives you the Holy Ghost and fire. This is making sense. Watch how this works now. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I hope you're getting this. So And there was a response and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Don't need you making up no stuff trying to fit in. Don't don't make, don't make, no. Don't don't go home and make up some. You tie my tie, I tie your tie. Don't make it up. (laughs) 
Eat at McDonald's. That's not tough. That's not tough. Don't make him up. He stole my Honda. It sounds good. Don't make him up. Because the book says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So not everyone will speak in tongues. I'd rather you have the Holy Ghost and stop cussing. <laughs> stop backbiting and gossiping. Amen. Amen. Stop lying. Amen. Okay. All right, so. so God gives you the Holy Ghost so you can get loose from everything that had you tied down from your past to loose you, watch this, from the influence of your memories. To free you from the chapters of your life that have had you bound. Yes. He says, I'm not just going to give you the Holy Ghost, but I'm going to give you the fire that goes along with it. Yes. Incinerate your hatred. Uh -huh. Free you up to give God praise. Yes. Lift your head in optimism. Burn up that pessimism. Yes. Free you from the things that have bound you for 20 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Somebody shout, it's not too late. It's time to be loosed. Some of the things you've been struggling with were not your fault. Like Daniel in the lion's den, they simply got thrown in, in, in the fire furnace. Like the boys in the fire furnace, they simply got thrown in for obeying God. Yeah. Yeah. But another point on that is they didn't place themselves in the fire. No, no. They were placed there by someone that claimed to love them. But Nebuchadnezzar was a fan. But they got in the thing that was supposed to destroy them. But Jesus was there to meet them. Without Christ in your life, you go into these fiery situations alone. But God knows you cannot live the life he has created you to live without some stuff being burnt off you. The stuff that has you in bondage is what the Holy Ghost desires to burn and loose you from. You've cried the same tears so many times, your eyes are asking you, again? We are gonna do this again? Shouldn't we be delivered from this by now? God is saying, I've given you the authority and the power to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and let go of something that you thought was going to brand your life for the rest of your life. Everybody stand on your feet. Jesus is in the fire. The power of God is in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in you now that you're saved. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to do his work, he'll start to burn away whatever's tying you down. He says if you come to him, 
Allow God to save you through Christ Jesus. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And the fire or the ability, the power to be loose from those things that life has tied you down to, connected you to. That's just part of the power, the personal part of the Holy Spirit's ministry to you. So perhaps you came out of a rough beginning like I did. Bad dad, projects, single family home. Mom did the best for us, taught us how to work, taught us how to live, taught us how to pray. But it was not an ideal situation. Alcoholic dad, a lot of stuff that shouldn't be. But at the same time, I didn't turn out to be an alcoholic. Watch this. Watch this. I was teetering until I got saved. And then God burned up that connection. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, burned it up. I hadn't started drinking yet, but I felt like I should. And I found out something. Dave and alcohol don't mix. The Holy Ghost burns up these connections. Whether it's generational, situational, burn them up. It says, behold, I see four individuals walking in what should have destroyed them. And the fourth one is the Son of God. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Perhaps there's someone else. Y'all cut it out. Perhaps there's someone else who needs to make those decisions right now. You need to come to the Lord for the very first time. Come back to the Lord. doesn't matter how many times you've done it. Connect with God's house. If you've learned more in the last 45 minutes here than you have four or five weeks somewhere else, you're starving to death. You need to eat like an athlete to run this race that has set, been set before you. You gotta be strong, but you cannot believe what you don't know. You can't have faith in what you don't know. If you're here with us today and you realize, I should have made that decision earlier in the service, but I need to make it now, we'd love to receive you. The welcoming, welcoming committee has shown up for work one more time. We wanna welcome you into the body of Christ, back into the body of Christ, into God's church. Won't you come? We hope you enjoyed that message from Bishop David G. Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We believe that it was thought provoking, but also something that could penetrate your heart and your mind and cause a radical transformation. Please do us a favor before you go and like, share, and subscribe uh, on all of our platforms. David G. Evans One, as well as BBC Evangel on YouTube, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you want to be engaged with the content that God is using this ministry to produce. And as you feel led to, as in the sermon, you can also sow into this. We believe in sowing into the message, into what God has spoken into us, because we believe that that seed confirms that. And we trust and believe that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The information is on the screen. There's also a link in the comment section. Uh, and you can sow into your future with a heart of worship and a heart of praise. Again, we're so glad you joined us today for another wonderful message here at Bethany Church of Transformation Church of New Jersey. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.